if I was just building my stock portfolio with high conviction growth stocks, these are the three stocks that I would choose because of its innovation and its predictable growth. So in today's video, I'm gonna cover the three growth stocks that I would choose right now and hold for at least 10 years. I'm also gonna talk about the catalyst for why I think these are going to be potential hyper growth stocks in the future if you hold it for the long term. And I also gonna talk about why I think all the, so many of the analysts are so, so wrong. Now, before I jump into the three growth stocks, I wanna give you my simple framework for choosing high conviction stocks. Now, this is the three screening criteria I use at the bare minimum, which is, um, of course, buying companies, buy companies that you know, buy companies that grow, 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 and buy companies that make a lot of dough. The other criteria is I need a CEO that's visionary, like really kind of crazy, that has like big dreams. Yeah, a, 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 a CEO that's visionary and is the founder of the company. I also want a, comp um, a company that has a massive moat. Um, they have like a cult following. I also want a company that is super innovative. Like they're always building new products. They're always putting a lot of money into research and development. And of course, I also want a company that has insanely strong financials, meaning low debt, high cash in the company so they can last a very, very long time, even if the market changes and goes against them. And this is actually super, super important. I want a company that is solving a significant big problem in the world. And if they solve this problem, it could actually change the way we do things like around the world. I also look for innovation. Like they're always building building more and more different types of products that are just gonna help you in life. They're also focusing on artificial intelligence because <laughs> that's the future. Like that is gonna be, um, you know, like back when the internet was starting, like look at it, it's right now, it's like mainstream. Well, right now artificial intelligence is just starting. So 10 years, it's going to be a completely new world. Now the first stock is, you're not gonna be surprised. I've been like uh, saying this for a while now is Apple. Apple is becoming like going to be, I think, a hyper growth stock. The thing that's going to trigger Apple, and I said this in my video before, check it out, out here way back before Apple actually officially announced Project Titan. Not that they have, it's like, of course, accelerated the stock price, but I think like there's so much more growth in it. Okay, we got um, Project Titan, which is their electric car vehicle. They've already spent a ton of research and development and humongous amount of smart smart people working on this for a very very long time and they're targeting this car in 2024 and the thing about apple is that yes they're going to be late in the game i mean they're going to be competing against like tesla but they have a huge cult following and basically any time an apple product comes out people buy it i don't I don't know why. Like I, I, I like some of the Apple products. Like I own a lot of Apple products, but I'm not one of those cult followers, but there is a ton of people who are going to buy the Apple car. So I really think this is gonna be a huge uptake and real competitor to Tesla because they have a ton of cash. They already built their own chip. They've been focusing a lot on um, artificial intelligence. Uh, they've been spending a lot of research and development money. They've been spending a ton of horsepower, people power, um, energy into the this Apple car. So it's it's in the making and the fact that they're releasing it 2024, I think I'm sure whatever comes out of it is gonna be pretty at least it'll look really, really cool. The next thing is their Apple glasses. I mean this one, they're gonna like release this in like a couple years and Again, like, it's like the Apple Watch, you, you know, I thought the Apple Watch wasn't gonna be super popular. Well, boy, was I wrong. Like a lot of people have the Apple Watch. I could see the same thing happening with the Apple glasses. And this is the most important part. And this is, I think this is where it really, really um, elevates Apple is their, their Siri. So Siri is actually built on machine learning and um, AI. Basically, what I think it's called a neural engine. So basically you've noticed that when you use your phone, it looks at your face and it can recognize your face. Well, that is artificial intelligence. So they've been spending a ton of energy on that for so long and so many people have their iPhones and using up using their phone and what Apple is doing is collecting all that information. They're gonna get a lot of insightful information, process it, and, and they're gonna just continuously build new, new products, enhance their AI, and it's just gonna change, again, change the world with whatever they're doing back in the scenes in the company. All to say is that it's got a lot of growth catalysts. This is why I'm a huge believer in Apple. Oh, and one last thing about Apple, which I forgot to mention. Apple has a huge return on invested capital. It's like 31. Okay, what this really means is that basically any money that they collect 
in the company, they know how to grow that money, okay? They have the biggest return on investment on their money out of these a lot of the tech companies. It's an unreal. So I would just all to say is that they know how to make money. Now the second stock is Amazon. Now I know, I know, I know, I know, I hear you. Amazon is expensive, meaning like the share price is just so expensive. I don't actually mean think that the company is actually that expensive, but just buying one share takes so much money. Totally get it. But if you, I think for my United States viewers, I know you can buy fractional shares, so that's why I think Amazon is a great fit. Like just keep buying fractional shares. Again, though, I'm not your financial advisor. I'm just like, this is only for entertainment purposes. So please do your due diligence. But other than that, I would say Amazon is a great, great buy. Oh, hey, Canadian viewers, if you know how to buy fractional shares, please let me know in the comments below because I would be super interested in finding out how to do that. But let's get back with the growth catalyst for Amazon. Why I think uh, Amazon could be like a hyper growth stock in the near future. Well, not in the near future, for the long term. So one thing is their drone delivery. They've been focusing a ton of money on drones. And I think they got recent um, regulations, like a bill passed in the United States where they're able to test their drones out like commercial, like com for commercial reasons. So all to say is that the drones are coming. I don't know if this means like drones are gonna like come in and drop off your parcel like in front of your door, but definitely they're gonna be using some drone delivery business within their business model. Second thing is that they've invested into also electric vehicles. They've partnered up with Rivian and their delivery cars are all gonna be electric vehicles. So the fact that they've invested into electric vehicles with Rivian and they've got their cloud platform and I know that they're focusing a lot on machine learning and artificial intelligence on their Amazon e-commerce system, which is why they can pretty much like figure out what you want to buy and, and, and push products to you on Amazon. Did you ever notice that? All to say is that because they're in the AI space, I think like, again, that's a huge catalyst, like huge, like I could see them potentially coming up with, you know, full self-driving type features with Rivian. Also because Amazon's the richest person in the world. So there's a huge financial backing behind Rivian. And this is the biggest catalyst for Amazon. Jeff Bezos has been working on a space program for a long, long time. I think it's called Blue Origin. And one of the immediate objectives is to get another person onto the moon, basically has uh, like space flights. But his ultimate vision is actually having people live in space, like work in space, live in space. Now I know this is like such a far-fetched idea, but this has been his, like in his dream since high school. I would not bet against Jeff Bezos, who's been super successful with Amazon. Actually, he was super successful on Wall Street. He worked as an engineer and then worked as in Wall, um, on Wall Street and worked his way up to VP. He's been super successful, it seems like, in everything he's done. He's like, he's relentless. So all to say is that I'm not gonna bet against Jeff Bezos with the space program. Now his goal, his goal is to actually land on the moon by 2024. That's pretty cool. And the next one is Tesla. Okay, here are the growth catalysts for Tesla. If you didn't know about it, it's full self-driving, which is basically the car can drive itself. Okay, they have the software, they already built it. It's in beta version. It's gonna be widely released very, very, very near in the future. And it's gonna be a subscription model. So that's a huge growth catalyst for it. The other growth catalyst is a decentralized um, utility company. So basically they're building these big battery storage units and they've got the software behind it where basically you can sell your sell your energy back to you know, power companies or you could create a smaller utility company with your neighbors. So all to say is that this is huge and Elon Musk and Shamath, a very rich billionaire and super smart, has said that this energy business is going to be bigger than the electric car business, which is like, wow, insane. Now the other big, big, big catalyst for Tesla because they already got the full self-driving like pretty much done, I know it's not reached level five autonomy, which level five means like you can't, you need to, to reach level five, You that means you can take a human away from the car and the car can actually drive itself and regulations allow it. I think it's gonna come, okay? Robo taxis already exist in China. They exist some parts of the United States. And they even, I think there's even like a little one in Ottawa. All I say is like, it's here, you guys, it's coming so I could see Tesla taking advantage of that and having their own robo taxi network. Now, I thought this was such a far-fetched idea when this was like talked about like last year and a couple years ago, but now that I have, I own a Tesla and I only have like the autopilot. And I think that's still pretty cool, which means you can let the car drive itself on the highway. And knowing that this full self-driving beta version is already out and I've been binge watching like what 
the capability of this full self-driving feature is, beta version, I could see for sure it's coming. It's going to be here in the very near future. And then for sure, RoboTaxis is here. Um, it just needs to surpass regulations. And you're probably going to say like, yeah, like how are regulations going to accept it? Well, hear me out. Norway is already going to allow it. So when that feature is done, full self-driving, they're going to allow Tesla to like allow them to do what they need to do with the car. So I'm pretty sure like I would be confident that Norway and, and California are going to be the ones to do a robo taxi network. And once people see that this is real um, and, and adopt it, then I think it's just going to be super scalable. And this is a huge money maker for Tesla. So why do I think all, a lot of these analysts are wrong? It's because like with conventional Wall Street analysts, they're so short term. Their price targets, have you noticed, are always like 12 months out, okay? Like morning, Morningstar is like the worst. I hate Morningstar. I mean, it's a good reference point, but like every time I look at it, I kind of shake my head. So all these analysts, just think about it from their perspective. They're covering so many companies and um, they're actually paid to promote some companies. Like they go, you know, they've wine and dine with certain companies. Um, they become friendly. So, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll do something that's either in the com certain companies that they are supporting. Like think of like IPOs, they're just like shopping them up, shopping around, do road shows, promoting them. And then sometimes their their companies are actually shorting the stock. So they'll give like a poor price target just because the, their company like Morgan Stanley is shorting like Tesla and then they'll just like have a really crappy price target just so that, you know, they hope that there's going to be some falling and then they can actually make some money. All to say is that, look, analysts don't have a lot of skin in the game. They're, they're not paid to actually be right. So that's why I think, like, that's one of the reasons why analysts are always so, so badly wrong. Now, if you're wondering if you should follow an analyst or if an analyst's um, price targets are, like, good or not good, check out this website called tipranks.com. You could just type in the name of the analyst and it'll tell you the rating on the analyst. Now, I'm not saying every analyst is crappy. I mean, there's some really good ones out there. I'm just saying, just do your due diligence, check the check the analyst rating. And I would say like, big thing is just word of caution. A lot of the analysts are very short-term thinking. They're only looking at one-year price targets. But if you are a long-term investor, this is why, this is your competitive edge. You can really figure out what you think the price targets are in five years, 10 years from now, based on all these different types of revenue streams that a company has that hasn't been actually priced into the stock by these analysts. So if you ever find a high conviction company that meets all this criteria, which is the first three rules that I always follow is buy a company you know, buy a company that grows, 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 and buy a company that makes a lot of dough. And of course, all the other criteria, which is uh, buy companies that are leaders in their sector, like in their industry. Buy companies that have a strong CEO, ideally the founder of that company, because they really got a lot of skin in the game and they really want to push their vision forward in that company. Buy companies that have strong financials, like little debt, high cash. Um, also buy companies that have a cult following or like or have a moat where they are a huge competitive edge. Like they, the people just keep going back to their products and buy a company that can solve a huge problem. And by solving this huge problem, it could really, really help so many people in the world. And of course, buy a company that's in one of the big, big disruptive technologies, which is artificial intelligence, and always buy a company like for growth stock that's always innovating. Anyways, I hope you found this video super helpful. I wish, I wish, like back in the day, someone created a video for me, this would be like golden. If you found this video super helpful, please smash that like button, hit it, hit it. So you let me know first that I did an okay job. And secondly, so I could create more videos for you. And if you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and that bell notification button so you get the latest and greatest videos coming to you. I'll see you in the next video.